All right, welcome everybody to the SEP theory seminar. This is um, the second part of Vera Fisher's talk on spectra and indestructibility. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to it. Go ahead, Vera. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me again. And yes, uh, we are continuing with the same topic from last time spectrum in indestructibility um, of independent maximum independent families. So um, we spent most of the time last, um, last Friday discussing indestructibility properties of <clears throat> maximum independent families. And in particular, we looked at the strengthening of the notion of maximality uh, for such families, which allows that they are indestructible by Sachs forcing, Miller partition forcing, and uh, another forcing which is due to uh, Saharan Chula. All right, so our goal uh, is today to um, expand our uh, understanding of the possible sizes of maximum independent families by looking at their spectrum, defined as the, the set of all cardinalities of maximum independent families. And once we see this set of possible sizes in a very natural way, we will, uh, at least for me, is the question, well, uh, to what extent the various witnesses uh, to cardinals appearing in this spectrum can be chosen to be um, of good projective complexity. So this would be a small detour, which will take us outside of the realm of independent families, but I think a very natural area and direction of, of discussion. And then finally, if the time allows, uh, we will look at the very special case of um, a higher pair spaces analog of maximum independent families. All right, so this is the plan for today. And we move on. What is the spectrum of independence? This is simply the set of all cardinalities of maximal independent families. So um, what we saw is there is always a maximal independent family of cardinality the continuum. So uh, if we take a large product, product of um, sex forcing, we can obtain a model in which the continuum is lambda. There is a maximum independent family of size out of one. That was one of the results from uh, last Friday. And moreover, uh, what is interesting in this model, there are no maximal independent families of any other size. So essentially an isomorphism of names argument similar to the one uh, that one can observe in the con model, but here it's a different context. An isomorphism of names argument shows that um, for each kappa, such that L of one is less than kappa, less than lambda, there are no maximal independent families of size kappa. All right, so to a great extent, this is a counting argument and um, I'm, I'm just moving on. All right, so um, the spectrum can be small. It can be just the continuum, the continuum can be big. If we increase the dominating number, the spectrum will be very small. It can be also non-convex, it can be just L of one in the continuum. So the next question is, can we have an arbitrary size uh, of a maximum independent family provided we have enough space uh, to generate, to have such an object? All right, so for this, we're going to look at the organization filters. So uh, given an independent family, we say that uh, a filter is a diagonalization filter. If it has the following property, every member of the filter meets every Boolean combination on an infinite set. And in fact, this can be substituted by saying um, that every Boolean combination um, has non-empty intersection with every member of the family. And moreover, we want that this uh, family to be maximal with respect to this property. So this maximality is very crucial. All right, so why are we interested in such diagonalization filters? Well, if we force 
uh, with Matthias forcing with respect to such a dehumanization filter, the associated generic will have some very good properties. Okay. Um, all right, everyone should know what Matthias forcing relativized to filter is, but here is once again the definition. Um, and the extension relation. Okay. So S is an initial segment of T. T minus S is contained in A and B is a proper subset of A. So we can think of every condition making a promise, uh, a finite approximation to the generic and the condition moreover promises that um, the generic above S will be a subset of A. All right, so this is uh, what we have. So what is what are these good properties of, of the generic uh, filter provided that the generic real provided that U is a dehumanization filter? Well, uh, we can use such a real to extend the given independent family and we can, uh, moreover, we can do this in a very, in a very useful way, in a very good way. Namely, not only we are going to uh, extend the given independent family, we have a real which is independent over this uh, ground model independent family A, but moreover, we can eliminate intruders. If we have a ground model real, which extends our independent family, then this real cannot coexist together with the generic in the larger independent family. So in, in an iteration, the second feature will be used to provide maximality. Okay, yeah. so, yes. <laughs> it's probably a stupid question, but uh, is it always uh, like, uh, can you extend the diagonalization filter to an ultra filter? And so... No, 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 no. The diagonalization filter is never an ultra filter. Okay, okay yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, this is a very crucial point. Um, we can look at an example in a moment. All right, uh, so let's see how this works. Well, this is a standard, uh, a typical density argument. So what we want to do is we want to show that um, that given um, any condition, we can guarantee that uh, the set of, okay, we can guarantee that the generic, so what we want to guarantee is of course that the generic meets every Boolean combination on an infinite set. And also we want to guarantee that its complement meets the Boolean combination, every Boolean combination on an infinite set. So in terms of forcing, it is sufficient to guarantee that um, there are infinitely many, unboundedly many integers appearing in these intersections. So for any Boolean combination and every natural number, we can look at the set of all those conditions which make a promise that the generic um, will meet the Boolean combination a h on a set on an integer, which is bigger than n. This is even a very strong form that I, I've written there. And similarly, uh, we can look at the set of conditions which make a promise that the complement of the generic um, meets the Boolean combination arbitrarily high, or in this case, above n. And now both of those sets are dense um, <clears throat> which which achieves the goal that indeed um, the generic is going to extend the ground model independent family for which this uh, filter uh, was chosen to be um, a diagonalization filter. So, so far we did not use maximality. Maximality comes uh, as soon as we want to eliminate intruders. So uh, suppose that our family was not maximal. Suppose that there is a real Y from the ground model, uh, which can be used to extend um, our you know, family, our independent family. And now we just consider what are the options for this real. If it is in the future, then, then well, 
clearly the, the, the material is um, a pseudo intersection of all the members of the filter. So it is almost contained in Y. And here we have a Boolean combination, supposed Boolean combination, but this is a finite set. So um, it is clear that it this cannot be an independent family. The other option is that this is not in the filter, but now here we use maximality. There was a reason that we cannot add it to the real. So either there is a set such that the intersection of this set in the filter with our uh, intruder Y is finite. And so again, we have that the intersection with the generic is finite, or there is, <clears throat> um, member of the filter and a Boolean combination such that um, this is, has a non-empty intersection. That was the requirement was we have the, the largest filter, the, the maximal filter with the property that its elements meet every Boolean combination on, on a non-empty set. So this would be uh, the counter example, the reason we did not add Y to this filter, but this immediately implies that um, we have, a, we've produced uh, Boolean combination, which is fine. So in either of all those cases, um, the, the generic, we can think of it as uh, eliminating the intruder. Okay, so what is this giving us? Well, this is allowing us to produce maximum independent families of arbitrary, regular, and countable size. So whenever we, we want to produce such family, we can use a finite support iteration of um, Matthias forcing with respect to some appropriate or carefully chosen, namely diagonalization filters. So, um, so I, I've written explicitly in the proof, suppose we have the desired size of the, of the continuum is lambda, and we have uh, an intended desired size for the independence number kappa, which is regular, and uncountable. Um, in fact, uncountable finality should be enough. One can do this for uncountable finality. So um, what we do is we consider the ordinal product of uh, lambda and kappa. So, um, all right. Yeah. Yes. I was just thinking about the earlier thing. So can it ever be countable with cofinality? <laughs> So this is this is this is where I'm going. So this technique that we are seeing cannot produce even a maximum independent family of countable finality. Alpha omega, this diagonalization method is unachievable because if if we have an iteration of a final sequence of length, uh, countable final sequence along the iteration, we cannot diagonalize. Their new reals would just appear along this final sequence. And this feature that the second item that provided maximality cannot be applied. So this technique cannot be even used to apply to produce a maximum independent family. And this is one of the main questions that would occupy us very, very shortly, how to get a maximum independent family of cardinality, alpha omega. And uh, this question is solved. We're going to see a solution to this question. The question which is still open and is, uh, well, in my understanding, a difficult question is if it is consistent that I is equal to alpha omega, this is, uh, as far as I'm aware, open and very difficult. Okay, so along the, the such, such, such an iteration of, um, we can produce recursively a maximum independent family of cardinality kappa by um, adjoining new um, members of, of the family. And uh, since any real is obtained at an initial stage of, of the iteration, provided that the iteration is uh, uncountable of regular length, say, uncountable, um, the organization would, would guarantee, would prevent any intruder of destroying maximality. So this will provide maximality. All right. So um, this, this method can be further extended. We can, uh, we can arrange a length of the iteration in which we have unbounded subsequences of various length, of various size. 
but uh, this would provide a very weak result with respect to what we are aiming for. Um, we can provide only finitely many uncountable values to be realized as members of the spectrum. We can generate recursively maximum independent families of various sizes. What we still don't know, what this method is not allowing us yet to obtain is, well, what if we want the spectrum to be infinite? So we want infinitely many values. And then the second um, still question which, which avoids us is how to exclude values from the spectrum. How to guarantee that a certain cardinal is not there, there are no maximum independent families of this size. In other words, we would like to have um, a precise equality here, not just a subset equality. All right. Um, so, on one side, we know that um, we have an isomorphism of names argument, uh, which we can observe in the in the Sachs model, um, and. Um, at least when I'm when I'm thinking of, of pushing an isomorphism of names argument, the first question is what happens with these combinatorial objects undertaking ultra powers of partial orders? So um, let me remind you what this is. Suppose we have a measurable and uh, witnessed by some complete uh, ultra filter, D on kappa, and suppose we have a partial order, then um, the ultra power with respect to this measure is um, the power is consists of all, of all equivalence classes associated to functions from kappa into the partial order, where the equivalence class uh, consists of all those for which um, equality with a member is witnessed by a member of the filter. And this, this <clears throat> extends to partial order on the ultra power by declaring that f is less or equal g, this is a typo. If the set of points for which f of alpha is p below g of alpha is an element of the measure. And uh, moreover, we can identify every element of the original partial order with a member of the ultra power by just identifying p with the function which sends, with the constant function sending every, every element of kappa to the condition p. So p is a subset is a suborder of um, its ultra power. All right, why is this useful? Well, um, if P is CCC and our partial orders um, are quite CCC, then P is in fact a complete suborder of its ultra power. And if uh, moreover, if P has the countable chain condition, then so does the ultra power. So here is the lemma which would be, uh, which we will make an application of. If we have a P name for an independent family of cardinality greater or equal kappa, so in V of P, we have that A is independent, then the quotient we can think of since P is a subset of, is a complete suborder of its ultra power, we can think of this ultra power as a two-step iteration where we have the quotient here, then in, in, when we force with this quotient, A will cease to be maximum. And this is, um, this is also true for almost these joint families, uh, for finitary groups. And it's, it's a standard argument which uses something called averages, average of names. All right, so now we have, we know how we can eliminate possible sizes of appearing in the spectrum of independence. And uh, a slight refinement of what we were talking about until now, how to produce finitely many sizes into the spectrum can be used to simultaneously exclude values. But this can be done with this technique at the price of assuming measurables. So if we have, finitely many measurable witnessed by uh, some complete ultra filters, 
then we can uh, obtain a generic extension in which um, the spectrum not only contains these finitely many values, but in fact, uh, is exactly evaluated as these values. So what is the idea? The idea is again that we choose uh, a length in which we have unbounded subsets, the desired sizes. But now we are going to have two tasks along, um, along um, disjoint index subsets. So for each of those desired size, we fix an index subset, which is unbounded and would be also, we would require that it has the cardinality, the desired cardinality. And along this, this set, index set, we are going to iteratively generate a maximal independent family of cardinality, the desired cardinality, and unboundedly often, we are going to take the ultra powers of initial segments of the iteration. So um, our technique of adjoining uh, new generators is, uh, we know CCC, so the quotients would be nice, the whole iteration would be CCC. And uh, a little bit more how this is done. Well, suppose we have this, this unbounded sets along the iteration, they're fixed, gamma j's. Uh, for convenience, we can work with successor ordinals. And so along each of those um, index sets ij, we, we have two independent tasks, one of which is generate the witness of size kappa j, the other one is eliminate witnesses. So we, we divide this unbounded set into even and odd subsets. And moreover, we can think of these this tasks of providing maximum independent families of various sizes as they're quite independent. They do not interfere so much. So we define a finite support iteration as follows. Um, for alpha less than gamma star. Okay, suppose that we are at some initial stage of the construction, and we have uh, constructed an independent family A K alpha, which consists of reals R K gamma for gamma below alpha in I K. So we, we worry about um, each, each index set individually, and they're constructed in such a way that um, R kappa gamma, R k gamma, diagonalizes uh, a family which has been uh, obtained so far. So this essentially says that um, Q alpha, when we are at stage alpha and we have to add a new diagonalization real, we have constructed some independent family along our chosen index set we choose a diagonalization filter for this independent family. We add a new real, and so we extend the family. At odd steps, which are successors, we just take an ultra power of the entire construction of the entire initial segment P beta, and, um, and take a name for, for the quotient forcing of this ultra power and P beta. So, so this, this would result into simultaneously providing witnesses while eliminating any undesired size from appearing in the spectrum. Of course, an immediate question is, well, wasn't this a little bit too complicated? Do we really need all this measurable? And again, uh, even if we use the measurables and we can exclude values, this does not answer the question how to add a maximal independent family of cardinality alpha omega. And the answer is um, surprisingly sim simple, <laughs> going back to the diagonalization filters. So suppose we have an independent family and we have a diagonalization filter. Now, um, let's not just add a single, uh, diagonal, a single orthogonal real to the given independent family, but finitely many. So we fix our diagonalization filter and we force with a finite product of, of the Matthias forcing with respect to the very same diagonalization filter. 
So what is not difficult to see is that in fact, the original family, independent family, together with these finitely many Matthias reals is independent. They're mutually independent, the, the generic reals. And moreover, we still have this nice feature of eliminating intruders or what we call the organization. Every time we have a grandmother real that could have extended our independent family, this real cannot coexist with any of the Matthias generics into a larger independent family. All right, and again, the proof is um, standard density argument. Uh, item two is more or less already covered. Um, the fact that the, the Matthias Rios are mutually independent is can be seen, um, it's not very difficult. Essentially, we want to guarantee so if these are the new, the new reals which we associate, every time we have a Boolean combination, we want to guarantee that for every new Boolean combination of these generics and every Boolean combination of the already given maximal independent, uh, independent families of maximal, this intersection, this new Boolean combination would be infinite. And how do we guarantee this generically? Well, we just guarantee that there infinitely many integers which, which are forced to be members of this, in, of this new Boolean combination. And this can be done locally via the finite approximations. It is not difficult. Um, so this is a standard argument. So here is again, I've written explicitly what the dense set is. All that we need to do is we need to guarantee that every time we have an old Boolean combination, a new Boolean combination and a natural number, any condition can be extended to a stronger condition, which guarantees that for some natural number i star bigger than n, this i star would be a member of the expected new uh, Boolean combination. And this can be done. So here is uh, more precisely how this, connect. here we use actually explicitly the fact if we start with an arbitrary condition and we have finitely many elements of the diagonalization filter, we do use um, we do use the fact that it's we speak about the same diagonalization filter. We know that their intersection is in the filter, and so in particular, their intersection has an infinite. Is this this, this set here is infinite? So we can find arbitrary large in, integers which are in the set. In particular, we can find an i star, which is not only bigger than n, but is also bigger than the maximum of all initial approximations given by the condition P. And then from this point on, uh, it is a straightforward how to extend and find a condition, find an extension, which, um, which would force <clears throat> that um, I star is in fact in, in the Boolean combination of the Matthias generics and the model Boolean combination. Aha, but why do we need to restrict ourselves to finite products um, that, that clearly can be extended to larger products as long as we take them with finite support? And this is how we actually solve the problem of obtaining or forcing a maximal independent family of cardinality out of omega. So the statement can be um, formulated as follows. Given any uncountable cardinal, including aleph omega, we can construct a CCC partial order, which adjoins a maximal independent family of cardinality theta. Aha. So how can this be done? We know that if we take large products, arbitrarily large of Matthias forcing with respect to uh, uh, the organization filter, these, these reals are mutually, um, mutually independent. So in fact, the size will come from, from the width from such the largeness of such products where we'll, to provide maximality, we'll have to iterate, but the iteration can be quite short, um, quite short, but of uncountable finality. We still, uh, we still cannot overcome the boundary of getting the independence number being California. So, 
uh, a little bit more about this construction. Let's fix cardinal sigma tet and lambda, where sigma is regular and countable. This is the intended value of the independence number. So if we are only thinking of how to add a maximal independent family of size alpha omega, then we can certainly take sigma to be uh, alpha one. This is the shortest possible um, length of this construction that we can apply. Uh, lambda is the intended value of the continuum. And what we do, how do we generate our uh, forcing notion? Well, we fix um, a theta splitting tree of height sigma. So you can think it is everywhere splitting and it is of short height. So to fix the notation for each alpha less than sigma s alpha is the alpha splitting level of s or you can think of this as just all sequences of length um, alpha since uh, I'm saying that we can split everywhere. All right, so this is the underlying structure and now we use such, such trees to generate a maximum independent family of size s theta. What is our uh, partial order? Well, it is a finite support iteration of length sigma, that was the intended value of the independence number. So the minimal size of a maximum independent family. And uh, for each alpha in VP alpha, we have that Q alpha is a large product, is a product of um, Matthias forcing with respect to certain verbalization filter, filters. And this, this um, how many? Well, for each node appearing in S alpha, for each node of land S alpha in our um, splitting tree, we associate, we will be associating a new real, and in fact, we'll be uh, forcing with respect to Matas forcing for some uh, appropriately chosen diagonalization filter. Okay, so just a little bit more. So the construction starts slowly. You can think of starting by just adding con reals, um, and then, uh, in as soon as we start, say with with some trivial partial order, then we add. We can just uh, think of u zero as the Frechet filter. So um, we add, or we can think of just adding conreals, and then um, for each eta, which is in S one, we we say that a eta is in fact the generic reader real associated to this uh, diagonalization filter U eta. Okay, this is the beginning of the construction. And now suppose we had some stage alpha in our construction, we have defined P alpha. So we have, we live in BP alpha. And for each node, which is in S alpha, for each node of length alpha, we have associated defined an independent family, which consists of the reals appearing as successor of successors of initial segments of eta. So if this is eta, we have some initial segment and we take all the successors. So this is where the width and in fact the cardinality comes from. Um, all right. So we choose very carefully these independent families. And for each eta, we choose a diagonalization real along a eta. And then we force with Matas forcing with respect to all these diagonalization reals for nodes of, of length alpha. And, uh, and that's it. <clears throat> in, the, in VP alpha plus one, uh, we take the new reals the new, the new reals, and so we enlarge our families. Okay, so where are the, where is the maximum independent family of cardinality theta that we, that I promised? Well, we take an arbitrary branch through the family, through the tree S. Along this branch, we would have generated uh, an independent family, which is of cardinality theta, and it is maximal because because the length of the iteration, there is an iteration and the length of the iteration is of uncountable finality. That was sigma. 
uh, sigma was the length of the iteration. All right, and so we can uh, generate or we can force a maximum independent family of say cardinality aleph eta. But um, once, once we see and understand this construction, it becomes clear that it actually has a much bigger potential. It is, it, we, are not, we are not obligated to be restricted to just providing a maximum independent family of single size. The size came from the width of this, of this um, partial orders or these products, or it came from, so what we can do is in fact, uh, for any chosen set of uncountable cardinals, Uh, we can simultaneously uh, introduce, provide maximum independent families of the desired size of the of the intended or desired sizes. So again, choosing a size for the independence uh, for the independence number, for which for now we can only take regular uncountable size lambda of uncountable finality. This would be the size of the continuum, intended size of the continuum, and we take an arbitrary set of cardinals between sigma and lambda so that sigma is the minimum this would be the minimum we can always we cannot avoid adding uh, a witness for the size uh, in such a construction there there is always a maximum independent family size continuum and in fact so uh, we can we can generate we can produce a max a generic extension in which every every size in the set that the one would be witnessed uh, by a maximal independent family. And what is the idea? Well, the idea is that we simultaneously do the same construction that we did along a single tree uh, for all the trees, uh, for very many trees corresponding to the members in this desired size of witnesses, of, of sizes for maximal independent families by choosing um, for each, for each such cardinal, a theta splitting tree, but we choose them all to be of the same height. And this height would be the length of the iteration. And so we repeat the same process uh, by choosing, by generating recursively this in the maximum, these independent families, which are very, very wide um, in a certain sense. And we use the length of the iteration to provide maximality. So now we, we add at each stage, not only we worry for all possible trees, for all possible nodes, we take the trees to be of course pairwise disjoint. And so we can produce uh, a large product, which adjoins, which, which by forcing for the, with the Matthias, three, Matthias forcing for an appropriately chosen the organization filter. And so uh, this would be, and so what we have is that, um, so that's how it would look at standard, a standard um, stage of the construction for some stage alpha, which we have a particular set A eta. And then we choose to generate A eta. We just look at the nodes and the reals associated to nodes appearing at successor of successors of initial segments of our node in the tree S data. We don't worry about the other trees. So these are quite independent tasks. And, and that's how we generate recursively these independent families. And so eventually for every tree and every branch passing through the tree, we can produce a maximum independent family, which is, uh, which is of the desired cardinality. So this is for fixed theta, we have our tree, we have a branch through the tree, we look at all successors of initial segments of the tree, and this would be a maximum independent family of cardinality theta. Aha. Maximality is again the question of, of the organization, and so we have we can have the spectrum to be arbitrarily large. All right, so um, moreover. This, as you can see, these forcing notions are, in a certain sense, very, very wide. We repeat each task very many, unnecessarily many times if we want to be, in a certain sense, optimal. And this allows us to, in fact, generate, uh, all right, we can mimic, let's say, we can mimic the, the average of names. We can produce names given any small 
independent family, which is not one of the desired sizes, provided that the intended spectrum is small, we can produce, we have enough space to produce a name which would be isomorphic to, to the members of our family and which would, be a, which would be a witness that the family, if it is small, it is not maximum. So what I'm saying is that this partial order is, has enough good structures to, to run an isomorphism of names argument. And in fact, we can guarantee that if, if the spectrum is not too big, for example, if it is small, we can guarantee that we have an exact equality. Uh, we can do this also for infinite, infinitely many uh, values. Uh, we can have that the spectrum is exactly realized with this uh, infinite set of cardinals. And of course, we need to, uh, to worry about the continuum. All right, um, so that's all great. This told us a lot about um, the spectrum of independence. We have a comparatively good spectrum with comparatively good uh, control of the spectrum. Now, there, there are still some small questions how to modify the construction if we want to have simultaneously a large spectrum, say uncountable, or, yes, a large spectrum, and at the same time, exclude values from the spectrum. This, this requires some more work. What we still don't know, and what this technique does not seem to, to address or to answer is how to guarantee that uh, consistently the independence number is accountable for finality. So this question is still open. All right, but um, so the notion of a spectrum, of course, for, um, all right, so there are two, two additional additional or adjacent topics that I wanted to mention is for now, we have two notions of given an independent family, we associated to our independent families, two types of filters. On one side, we spoke about um, the density filter. And on the other hand, we just defined the notion of a diagonalization filter. So the diagonalization filter, once again, is just uh, a maximal filter, maximal with respect to the property that for every element in the filter and every Boolean combination, the intersection with the filter is infinite, which in this case is equivalent to just requiring, requiring non-empty. Um, and we have the density filter which was defined as the collection of all subsets of omega with the property that every Boolean combination can be strengthened uh, so that the entire Boolean combination is in fact contained into the set X. Now clearly, just looking at the definition, we have that um, the density filter is contained into any diagonalization filter associated to an independent family. All right, uh, so what is interesting is the following fact that if suppose that A is densely maximal, uh, which means that the witnesses to maximality can be found below every Boolean combination, uh, then, in fact, uh, and then suppose that um, we have a diagonalization filter, your A is diagonalization for A. Then, in fact, this filter has to be contained into density filter. And the proof is not difficult. Well, suppose not. Suppose, uh, suppose this is not the case. So we can fix a set which is in the diagonalization filter, but not in the density filter. So being not in the density filter means that there is a Boolean combination 
um, with the property that any strengthening of this Boolean combination is not contained into the set X. So we just we just uh, took the counter counterpositive of, of the statement here. With other words, we have that the intersection of every st strengthening of this Boolean combination with the complement of X is non-empty. But this is equivalent, or this implies that for every, oops, for every strengthening of this uh, Boolean combination, the intersection of the Boolean combination with the complement of X is infinite. Aha, but the family is densely maximal, which meant that the which which means that this this Boolean combination A H for this Boolean combination, we can find a strengthening such that either a h star x or a h star omega minus x is finite. That meant that is exactly saying that that, that was the definition that the witnesses to maximality are can be found below every Boolean combination. So this means that X cannot be added. The family that we started with is maximum. Aha. But then we know that uh, this is infinite. So the only option is that uh, the, the set X meets the Boolean combination AH star on a finite set. And this is a contradiction because supposedly this set X was an element of the diagonalization future. And the diagonalization future is exactly collection of, of the elements of the diagonalization future meets every Boolean combination on an infinite set. Aha, so if the family is densely maximal, then what we obtained is that the diagonalization future is in fact, the density filter is in fact the unique diagonalization filter if A is densely maximum. All right. So that was one of the comments I wanted to make. I think that I gave myself more space. Okay, so um, so what we, what we saw is that, in fact, we can have a quite good control on the spectrum, oops, on the spectrum of maximal independent families. Okay, so let's say quite good control. And this is, in fact, there much prior to our study of the spectrum of maximum independent families um, was of interest was the work of Heckler on the spectrum of maximal almost disjoint families, who showed that in fact the spectrum of maximal almost disjoint families can be arbitrarily large So remember that A is just the minimum of this spectrum. And uh, the work then there is, the, there were um, afterwards obtained exact evaluations by Andreas Blas, and more recently by um, a joint work of Sakharov Shelev. Yes, Spinas. Sorry, no, uh, that was just uh, somebody. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so, and, and these these are improvements as, as to what 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 exact cardinals this exact evaluation. So Heckler provided uh, showed that any size any desired cl collection of sizes can be we can guarantee that they are maximum independent families of these sizes. The question of excluding um, values from the spectrum of mad families is more difficult, and and there they are there is there is some very interesting work associated to this, <clears throat> and some very interesting um, developments in in the um, in the forcing theory associated to these uh, studies. So similarly, one can essentially anal analogously one can um, look at the spectrum of maximal finitary groups, the spectrum of maximal eventually different family. 
families. And remember that in each of those cases, the associated cardinal characteristic is just defined as the minimum of this, of this uh, set of possible sizes of a certain combinatorial set of reals. All right, so um, this is, I, I refer to this as the classical setting. Uh, but surprisingly, um, our understanding of such similar combinatorial objects or combinatorial objects associated to cardinal characteristics of the continuum are uh, at all not, uh, in my understanding, we are, um, there is still a lot that can be done. So some recent work uh, that has been going on, so I'll write advances in understanding the possible sizes, understanding the possible sizes of combinatorial sets of reals, uh, maximal ideal independent families. Uh, this is some ongoing work with Jonathan Cantino. I mentioned a little bit about this last time. So um, we can provide witnesses. We can generate uh, ideal independent families, which are maximal and have various sizes. We still don't know how to exclude values. Uh, then a student of mine is looking at possible sizes of maximal almost disjoint families of trees. Uh, remember that the number 80 is defined as the minimum such size. This is look at Schembecker. And, um, and finally, uh, another interesting um, direction in which, which this investigation took us was to look at possible sizes or possible heights of maximal families of refining um, almost disjoint families. So we, we for maybe, I'm not sure to what extent this is the proper terminology, but we refer to those systems as distributivity matrices, maximal distributivity matrices, and um, of course, here we have to be careful what exactly, how exactly we define this. Uh, and the, what is interesting is that the minimal cardinality of such distributivity of the height of a such inextendable matrix of maximum disjoint families, refining, refining system of maximum disjoint families is the distributivity number. So this is um, a joint work with with um, <clears throat> Marlene Kölbing and Wolfgang Puchowski. So um, I say there is work in process, in a, a work in, in progress and advances in understanding. Uh, there are some very interesting new, new forcing techniques coming out of these studies. And we are very far from, from really understanding and really being able to control any of those spectrum in comparison with our current understanding of the spectrum of mad families or independent families here. But there is a lot of work going on. So all of this being said, and, and thinking about all the interesting uh, combinatorial uh, or forcing questions that, that we are actually looking at, there is an area which seems to be very adjacent and very relevant. So when we speak about um, mad families, it seems um, we speak about the complexity, the projected complexity of say mad families or maximal finitary groups. And there has been a lot of work that has been done in this direction. But for a long time, the focus was entirely either on the size continuum, which is very natural. And then once we start realizing we can have say maximal independent, maximal almost joint family in a model of size in which the continuum is bigger than out of one, then the question is, well, what is the minimal projective complexity of, of, of say, maximal almost joint family of cardinality L of one? And so uh, we, can, we can, in order to discuss this a little bit better in the contrast, context of a spectrum, let's say that, let's let me finally uh, make my terminology official. Um, let's say that whenever we have a spectrum of certain combinatorial sets of reals, in this case, I've taken maximum finitary groups, but if you prefer to think of mad families or maximum independent families or 
maximum eventually different families. So we refer, we refer to cardinals appearing in the spectrum. Uh, we refer to a combinatorial object, say maximal finite group of this cardinality as a witness to the size. And of particular interest uh, emerge sizes and witnesses, witnesses to intermediate um, values which can appear in the spectrum, which are neither Aleph one nor the continuum. These are not the extremal possibilities for such combinatorial object. All right, so um, let's say that we have a good projective witness to a certain size appearing in, in the spectrum of a, of a chosen cardinal characteristic or type of combinatorial objects we want to look at. So we say that uh, we have a good projective witness if this is a combinatorial object, say maximal finite degree group, or if you want mad families of cardinality mu, which is also of lowest projective complexity. So similarly to our focus of just understanding um, the minimum of a spectrum, uh, there has been a lot of study associated to finding a good projective witness to say the almost disjointness number, the independence number, the AE number, finitary group. And these are very interesting, uh, very interesting in my understanding, forcing techniques. Um, one can produce a co-analytic maximal independent family of size alpha one uh, in a model is in the Sachs extension. There is a con indestructible co-analytic uh, maximal finitary group. So we can have a maximal finitary group, which is co-analytic and, and in the continuum can be large at the same time. And there are a number of such results. So what seems to be not that well understood is what can we say about the projective complexity of, of such natural combinatorial objects which, which witness sizes of the spectrum which are neither Aleph one nor the, nor the continuum. So, um, well, there's some natural restrictions. For example, if we speak about finitary group and we want to have a good projective witness for some intermediate value, we know that the best we can hope for is in fact pi one two. Can this be done? Yes, this can be done. Uh, it's um, in fact, we can with a very serious preparation of the universe, we can produce a generic extension in which the continuum is say Aleph three. And there is a pi one two maximal finitary group of size Aleph two. And the same can be done for, for other combinatorial objects. In fact, the ones that we can, we can obtain are all relatives of the almost disjointness number. So maximal almost disjoint families, maximal eventually different families, maximal finitary groups. All right, so this can be done. There is, um, we, in fact, we can, we can choose any two values between below Aleph omega. So Aleph one and Aleph two are just for um, it, there, there is no significant difference between choosing any two values between Aleph Omega and realizing, <clears throat> realizing providing a pi one to definable maximal to finitary group, say, or maximal Z joint family uh, of the smaller size. All right. So um, when, when, when we analyze and we recall what we can produce though, is the following interesting situation occurs or becomes apparent. Um, so for say maximal eventually different families, we can provide a pi one one witness of size alpha one, which would be optimal. There is always a Borel maximal eventually different size continuum. Uh, but we do not know how to simultaneously, at the same time, provide a good projective witness for an intermediate value. So we do not know how to, at the same time, provide, say, maximal, eventually different family of size alpha two. We can provide um, a maximal, eventually different family of size alpha two 
with pi one to witness, so optimal witness, the Borel one is always there, but we do not know how to get at the same time size LF one, quantitative witness. And, and this, this, in fact, for all models that I'm aware of, it's a very similar situation. We seem to be, <laughs> we seem to be stuck at values. We can produce, we can provide projective, optimal projective witnesses for two different values in the spectrum, but that's where, that's where uh, currently we are. This does not mean that we are not looking further. All right, so uh, that was a little detour from um, the, dis the discussion of the um, spectrum of maximum independent families and in particular, and also other combinatorial objects. So um, in the last uh, 25 minutes or so, I want to talk about um, a very specific higher analog of uh, independent families. So uh, we want to look at um, an arbitrary regular uncountable cardinal. And we are going to look at natural analogs of what independence, of how independent families are uncountable, what they are, and how can we define uh, an uncountable analog or an analog on an uncountable cardinal. So um, we can speak about Boolean combinations again. And uh, the most natural definition is, of course, to speak whenever we have a family of subsets of kappa to the kappa, and we want to speak about an independence. Um, it seems natural to, re to require that for any two subfamilies, A1 and A1, which are subfamilies of size say less than kappa, if I'm making a direct analogy with the countable case, which are pairwise disjoint and empty, uh, the associated Boolean combination is non-empty. And there is nothing wrong with, uh, with this approach. Uh, the reason I, I am so cautious is because I'm interested in maximality. And maximality in the countable setting comes from the axiom of choice. Now, uh, if we have in this definition an increasing chain, it's not non-empty, sorry, it's unbounded. An increasing chain of, of independent families in this strong sense. Uh, we have no guarantee that the union of this increasing chain of bounded of independent families will be independent. There will be Boolean combinations which which would appear and they haven't they haven't been taken care of. So uh, the only question, of course, we can speak about independence, uh, but the existence of maximal independent families in the strong sense is is a question. And we're going to see some interesting results in this, in this, in this direction. A very restrictive approach, which, which at least to me reminds me very much of speaking of, about maximal finite regroups on kappa, is to look at, yes, unbounded subsets of a given cardinal kappa, but only at so-called finitely generated Boolean combinations. So I would require that these families um, that I want to look at the Boolean combinations are just finite. And if the Boolean combinations are finite, then uh, the axiom of choice does provide the existence of maxima, what uh, for the moment we will call a cap, maximal cap independent family. So we use the standard terminology that I've been using so far, uh, finite functions uh, are finite partial functions, finite domain, um, which is a subset of A, the range is the set zero one, and with any, any such, um, such, such function, we associate the Boolean combination in the standard way. We just take uh, essentially the intersection of all sets appearing in the pre-image of zero with the complements of the sets appearing in the pre-image one. All right, so um, this is uh, a, a notion which gives um, 
finitely, I'll speak about finitely generated Boolean combination. And we'll say that a family is kappa independent if, if every such finitely generated Boolean combination is unbounded. Now, uh, a maximal kappa independent family is just a kappa independent family, which is maximal under inclusion. And uh, by, by the axiom of choice, they always exist. The least size of such maximal kappa independent family can be defined as the independence number at kappa. All right, so um, they are, of course, stronger notions of independence that have been discussed already, but for now, that's, that's the very special um, higher bare spaces analog of independence I want to discuss. So what can be, what can be immediately seen? Well, there is always uh, a kappa maximal independent family of cardinality to of kappa. The reaping number is below the independence number of kappa, the dominating number of kappa is less equal I of kappa. And um, in fact, if I of kappa, remember that was one of the open questions in the countable setting, if I of kappa is kappa plus, then also A of kappa is kappa plus, just because we have this result for D of kappa and also um, by now also B of kappa. This is a result of Raghavan and Shilov. That's all right. So um, dense maximality. I want my witnesses to maximality to be again. I need a stronger notion of maximality if I am to uh, address the indestructibility of such of such um, kappa maximal independent family by kappa sex forcing. So um, the notion of maximality for a kappa independent family. Well, let's say that we want to keep our understanding that the witnesses to maximality are densely uh, distributed. With other words, below every Boolean combination, finitely generated Boolean combination, we can find a stronger Boolean combination which witnesses maximality. So formally, this would require that uh, we can write this definition by saying that this one of those sets is not unbounded. But because our Boolean combinations are only finitely generated, uh, this is not equivalent to requiring non-empty. And this is in fact too weak. It is, we cannot work with this. It is not uh, producing anything. It is not equivalent to non-empty. So we need a stronger definition. In fact, we say that a kappa independent family is, um, this, a kappa independent family is densely maximal if every set of every intruder uh, for every set which is not in the family below every Boolean combination, finitely Boolean, generated Boolean combination, we can find a strengthening such that either uh, this Boolean combination meets X on an empty set, or in fact, the complement of our set with this Boolean combination is empty. All right, so uh, are there kappa densely maximal independent families? Can we construct such objects? Well, um, after some, some searching, uh, we came up to the conclusion that the answer is yes. If we come, we, uh, we uh, accept the help of a normal measure. And without the normal measure, I really don't know how to construct these objects. So here is, um, in a certain sense, generalization of uh, Shellac's construction of a selective independent family in the countable setting, um, which um, now it is quite, uh, quite, quite, far from, from this original construction, but that's, let's see what we have. We have a measurable cardinal, we have a normal measure on kappa. And remember, we could construct a selective independent family in recursively by recurs under CH recursively in a construction of n to mega one. So here it is something very similar, but we do need the help of the measure or equivalently, we can use a partial order, which is a little bit easier to describe. So we look at the partial order, which consists of all pairs um, in which the first coordinate is just 
an independent family, a Kappa independent family, this week sense of cardinality Kappa. And the second coordinate is a member of the measure with the property that it meets every Boolean combination associated to the first coordinate on an unbounded set. And the extension relation is that um, the first coordinate can grow. We can get better and better approximation to some generic object, generic independent family. While the second coordinate has to be almost contained where here it is meant that the difference between A1 and A0 is smaller than kappa. So the second coordinates uh, in the countable setting generated the density filter associated to, <clears throat> to uh, our independent family, which for the analogous force, forcing notion had was selective, was had very good combinatorial properties. So um, now, in this case, we are going to see, again, the second coordinates are going to generate a filter, which we'll refer as density filter. And um, this, the generating set consists of elements in the normal measure. The, the closure properties of this filter are not, are, are not particularly good, but however, it still has very many useful features. All right, so this is a partial order. Um, it is kappa plus close, kappa dao plus cc. For this, we use the measure. We can think of a decreasing sequence in the partial order. Um, the union is, uh, is independent just because we look by finitely generated Boolean combination. And what we need is the diagonal intersection of the second coordinates because they come from the normal measure. We know that um, the diagonal intersection is in the measure. And then moreover, now we can fatten the set to guarantee that it meets every Boolean combination from this large union on an unbounded set. This can be done quite, uh, quite standardly because this is a set of size kappa. And so we can find a common extension. All right, but already here, so we say that this generic uh, independent family which we obtain is in fact, um, we will say that this family is you support it. So the, the use of the normal measure is, is very non-trivial. All right, so uh, in fact, this object that we constructed is densely maximal. Okay, so, um, okay, so densely maximal and a very interesting characterization though I have 15 minutes, uh, which, we haven't seen so far is yes, maybe I'm just going to write it down without proving it. Um, dense maximality for such you supported um, independent families uh, can be expressed is equivalent to the following uh, statement, namely, uh, so dense maximality for AG, you support it. We could have constructed it also along you, along a recursive construction using you, uh, is equivalent to the following statement. Uh, so uh, for every Boolean combination, And every set which is contained into the Boolean combination, either, either we have that <clears throat> the difference between the Boolean combination in the set is small in some very natural sense. All right, so I will have to define what this is. This is all sets in the dual which have the property that every Boolean combination can be strengthened to be avoided entirely. So either this difference is small in a natural sense or there is an entire Boolean combination which is contained into the difference. All right, 
And um, uh, for our work with this uh, Kappa densely independent uh, families, uh, this, this, this equivalent characterization of um, dense maximality would be very helpful. Okay, so uh, for now, I'm not going to, to give the proof, uh, but looking at our generic independent family, uh, we can look at the filter generated by the second coordinates appearing in, in uh, the, the filter G, the generic filter. So this is a filter which has the following property. It consists of all elements in the measure with the property that every Boolean combination can be strengthened, finitely generated Boolean combination can be strengthened to be entirely contained into the set X. So if you remember, that's very, very similar to what we had in the countable setting. Moreover, every set of sizeless recall kappa has a pseudo intersection in the filter. So we can think of uh, a kappa P set. So there is some strong analogy with the countable setting. And we do not have quite uh, a Q set. We do not, but what we have is that if we have a strictly increasing ground model function, uh, then there is an element of this, of this density filter whose enumerating function grows quite fast. With other words, it has the property that for each i, the value of a i plus one, the a plus first element of this, of this set is above uh, f of a of i. So this, this, we had the same property, which, which is in the countable setting follows from the Q set property. But here we have just this combinatorial fact, which would be very useful. All right, so using um, this, this, these properties of the density filter and the dense maximality, what we have been able to show is that if we have a measure of cardinal, we have a normal measure, and we have a U supported maximum independent family uh, on kappa, then this, this, this independent family will preserve its maximality after adding a large product of kappa sex forcing. So, um, all right, so how, what, what is the idea? So essentially in order to do this, we are relying on, on the properties of, of this. <clears throat> all right, so what is the idea? So essentially we want to show, we're just doing this for product. We're not doing anything about iterations. So we want to show that I just do it for single up <clears throat> six real. We want to show dense maximality with other words. We want to show that whenever we have a set and a Boolean combination, finitely generated Boolean combination with the property that X is contained in a H, then either then the following property HX holds, which says that either this set is small in a very natural sense, there was this idea that I defined, or there is an entire Boolean combination which is uh, contained into the difference. Okay, so that was the equivalent characterization of <clears throat> dense maximality for this type of families. And the proof is by contradiction, we suppose that our family is not anymore maximal, densely maximal. So we fix X and H such that X is contained in a H and this is not the case. Now we fix uh, a condition which forces all this. So P forces the X is contained into the Boolean combination. Um, and this is exactly what we do not want to happen. All right. 
And now, essentially, using the properties of this uh, analog of the density filter in the countable setting and fusion. So once we start working with the product, these become technically involved notions. Uh, we can find an element in the filter and an extension such that Q forces that this Boolean, the intersection of, of the set from the filter with the Boolean combination is contained in the name X dot. And then we have that the difference of this, of this set is in fact contained in this. This is the dual, the, <clears throat> essentially this is the dual of the density filter. And this is a contradiction to this hypothesis here. Oops. Okay, so in a certain sense, the overall, the overall, um, overall proof uh, is uh, reminiscent to a great extent of, of Shilas' original proof of the consistency of phi less than you. This type of thinning out and uh, a thinning out and producing a fusion, finding a, a, a finding a set. Uh, in the density filter, which which provides a contradiction, or in 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 a very strong sense, they can be found in this original proof. All right, so um, what is maybe still um, so what we have is that in fact we have that uh, there is a cardinal preserving generic extension in which we can have a number of higher bare spaces analogs of classical characteristics to be small while the total the kappa is large. And um, what this may be interesting to say is that, um, all right, so that's that. So, so there is much more that can be said about independence in the uncountable setting. This very, this is a, a quite quite of a restriction to look at finitely generated Boolean combinations. And there have been studies in which uh, one looks at arbitrary Boolean combinations. So I have five minutes, so I'm just going to go straight to my to my last slide. Oops, not, not quite there yet. So if we look at this most general notion of, of independence in which in which we do not restrict the size of the generated of the the, the subfamilies with which we want to associate um, boolean combination then we can speak of a notion that if we want to differentiate from the finitely generated boolean combination we can speak about strong independence so this is a result from 1983 the existence of such maximal strongly omega-1 independent families implies, um, in particular, the existence of a weakly inaccessible cardinal between aleph-1 and 2 dot aleph-1, or the existence of a measurable is equally consistent with the existence of a maximal or such strongly omega-1 independent family. All right, so um, that's all that I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, thanks a lot for your It was a very nice talk. Oh, I hope I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, lots of independence for me. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, have a nice uh, weekend. And next week there is no uh, separate seminar, but the week after that we have one. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye. bye.